So, all athletes competing in the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics were forced to install a very invasive app on their phones. But it's far, far worse than you know. You have to understand that since the beginning of the pandemic, it has been mandatory for all Chinese citizens to have a COVID tracking app installed on their phones. Well, at least if they expect to go anywhere and gain access to any supermarket or public area in any case. It works by tracking exactly where you go. And the idea behind it is that if you perhaps go into a supermarket and later on somebody who was in the same supermarket tests positive, they can then update and say that anyone that went into that supermarket was potentially exposed to COVID. And so it gives you a little code on your phone, like a green health code. And when you walk into a supermarket, etc., they have to scan this code and they will only allow you in if it's green, if it's yellow or red or whatever, then you're not allowed to go into the supermarket. However, if you've been inside that supermarket and later someone tests positive, your code will then turn to a yellow uh, or a red, depending on the severity of how close you came to a person who was infected. This in China is seen as a very effective way of controlling the spread of COVID. However, it's nightmarish if you think about it. For instance, for the Chinese New Year, one of my relatives in China couldn't visit the family for the big family reunion dinner, which is only an hour away in Guangzhou, simply because she walked into an area of Shenzhen where a single case was reported. Of course, the numbers are always bullshit, but the fact of the matter is there was a single case reported in an area of Shenzhen. And because she had gone into that area, not even close to where the person was, it gave her like an asterisk on her um, code to say that she was in contact or she'd gone into an area where there was a case. And because of this, of course, she didn't travel to go and visit the grandparents and the family and sit together and enjoy Chinese New Year. Privacy in China has for the longest time not really been a factor. And now the idea of the government knowing exactly where you have been and what you've been doing, and in fact, where you are at any given time has simply become a norm in China and it doesn't bother people. It's simply another freedom given up in order to be able to just carry on with life. And you find this a lot in China. If you just want to be left alone and get along with uh, what you do, you just tend to accept these things. You know, oh, my, I want to use WeChat to pay for my, my stuff. Well, WeChat wants um, access to my microphone and camera and everything. Well, there's no other way around it. I need to use WeChat to get around. So I'm just going to allow it. That sort of thing. You get used to it. And even me living in China completely uh, dropped this whole idea of, protecting my privacy. As dystopian as having the government know your every move might sound, what the athletes had to install takes it a step further. Due to some diligent reverse engineering of the application, it was discovered that the app acts not only as a COVID tracker and a translator, but also acts as a sensor and a spy tool for the Chinese government. You see, this app is kind of like a Swiss Army app. It does all sorts of things, including real-time chat, voice audio chat, file transfers, translation, news and weather updates about the Olympic Games. But of course, one of its main functionalities is all about health tracking and COVID tracking. And so this app requires you to submit passport details, demographic information, as well as your travel and medical histories. It's a lot of personal information. So where does all this sensitive and private and personal information of yours end up? Well, the app itself is made by the Chinese government. Well, at least companies that are directly tied to the Chinese government. And the app itself says that it will disclose personal information without user consent under certain scenarios, including but not limited to national security matters, public health incidents, and criminal investigations. Now, we all know that in China, a national security matter can mean anything. It could literally mean the color of the clothes that you wore on any given day. I'm not even joking about that. On top of the fact that the Chinese government can access your personal information without notifying you, there's also a list of banned words, some 2,442 banned words and phrases that were discovered in the app as well. Now, because this app is used for translation and voice messages and so on, it stands to reason that if you used any of these banned words or phrases, the Chinese government could simply access all of your voice recordings, all of your translations, and all of the information that you've input into the app. Let's take a look at this list of banned words that are going to trigger the Chinese government to spy on you, shall we? Now, if you ever wanted to know how insecure the Chinese Communist Party of China is, just look at this list. 
right at the top there, the first band phrase is down with the Communist Party. The second one is Communist Party of Dogs. Any sort of political infighting within the Communist Party of China is of course banned. Anything to do with Tiananmen Square and any topic surrounding Tiananmen Square. Anything to do with the banned religion slash cult Falun Gong is also banned. Anything pornographic is banned. Anything to do with Mao Zedong or any of the previous leaders. And you know what? You can't even mention Xi Jinping. If you type Xi Jinping, which is the current leader slash dictator of China, that's censored too. And on top of that, there are a number of phrases in Uyghur and Tibetan language which are also censored. Again, I must ask a question. Why were these games allowed to continue? Why, when we have so much evidence of human rights abuses, when China is currently engaging in undiplomatic spats with various countries, why, when athletes like Peng Shui are silenced and disappeared after making sexual abuse allegations, why, when China is launching hypersonic missiles, threatening to invade Taiwan, kidnapping Canadians and other foreigners to use in hostage diplomacy, imprisoning millions of Uyghurs in re-education camps, breaking their agreements with the UK and destroying Hong Kong's previously guaranteed autonomy and democratic freedoms? Why? Why has the world allowed this to happen? Why have the athletes sacrificed their privacy and dignity just to compete in this propaganda extravaganza? Why? I'll tell you why. It's because of greed and the inability of corporations and leaders around the world to grow a damn spine. But I'll tell you right now that Beijing does not deserve the honor of hosting the Olympics. It does not deserve any sort of praise or recognition for this farce. This will go down in history as an embarrassment to the international community, as a failure for good men to do the right thing when the time arose, and a time when immoral petty tyrants trampled on the innocent. For those of you who boycotted these atrocious games, I salute you. Stay awesome.